Following our video series of Kong API Gateways, we reached to a plugin which does one of my favorite things to do, which is IP restrictions. So what is IP restrictions and why would we restrict access of IPs? Stick with me and find out more. What's up guys, medium guy here and in this video we'll see what IP restriction is and we'll try to use the Kong API gateways plugin called IP restrictions and also we're going to have fun restricting our own IP and denying access for ourselves. So without any delay let's get down to work. So again in a total overview we have a schematic which explains all about the IP restrictions. So here we have a client, our reverse proxy server stands between the client and and the server which is for example serving our backend services so in a normal process our client would send a request to our reverse proxy server and in here our reverse proxy will check if the IP address is permitted if yes it will route the request to the upstream server and the server would return the response for the client and if the IP address is in the restriction list the reverse proxy will return some status for example 403 which is the status code for the forbidden access so if we go to the official documentations of kong for the ip restriction plugin as it is saying this will restrict access to a service or a route by either allowing or denying ip addresses we can both provide single IP addresses and multiple IP addresses or ranges again to allow or deny access. So again in a random port I have a echo server which echoes whatever request that I make and if I jump to my terminal I'll hit ls, I'll cd into place where I have my Kong files. In here we have our docker compose file and config file so if I nano config kong yaml which is the config file that I've passed inside the container for the dbls mode of kong deployment. So in here in the services section I have a echo server which is proxy to the upstream server which is our echo server and it has the path of slash echo. So as you can see we have our plugins section and in here we have our course plugin enabled and our rate limiting which you would know about if you have been following me along and if you don't I recommend you watch my previous videos in this video series because these are cool stuff to know and they will be handy for your services that you expose to the outside world. So I'll jump back to the official documentations and I'll try to find the sample configuration to enable the plugin globally and in here I have the simplest configuration and I'll just go ahead and copy I'll paste it in my plugin sections of configuration file so I don't know these IPs and also I don't know my own IP I'll hit save so that the thing that will happen is that the Kong API gateway will only allow access to this exact IP and also to this IP range which is in class C. So it will give access to 143.100 up to the 143.10255. So this is how we can define IP ranges for the IP restriction plugin. So I'll hit save. I'll hit Control X and as you know all I need to say is docker compose up. So this will run my Kong API gateway in the defined port in the docker compose file and if I go check my browser I'll hit refresh and as I see this is a Kong error and as the message is saying my IP address is not allowed because the Kong gateway will only give access to the sample IPs that I just copied from the official documentation. So if I go back to my terminal in here I should see that my IP has been locked to the output of the docker compose service and I'll just copy the IP and 
I'll hit Control C. Again, I'll try to edit my config file. And in here, I'll just paste the IP that I just copied. And also, let me just remove the IPs that I just copied from the documentation. So I'll hit Control S to save my file. Again, Control X. And again, I'll say Docker Compose up. I'll go back to my browser. I'll hit refresh. And as you can see, now I have the access to the upstream servers. And also my IP is allowed. So let's go back to the documentations. The allowed parameters that this plugin can handle are as shown in here. So as you saw in the config file, we have allow, which is a list of IPs or ranges to allow. And also we have a deny config, which again is a list of IPs or ranges to deny. Just remember one of the allow or deny must be specified in the config file. So to test out the deny config, I'll go back to the config file. This time, instead of saying hello, I'll say deny. I'll hit Docker Compose up. So the thing that should happen is that my IP is restricted and I don't have the access to the upstream servers. So in this configuration, all the IPs are allowed except for my own IP so everyone can access the upstream servers except for me. So in here we saw how the deny config works. I'll go back to the config file and in here if I change this last one to zero and I'll say slash 24 at the end. So I am now allowing a range of IPs which starts from 172.28.64.0 up to the 172.28.64.255. So I'll hit save, I'll exit my file. And if I go check the browser, I should be able to access the upstream server. So as you see, this is how to define IP ranges to low access to the upstream servers. So going back to the documentations we have two more configurations that we can pass to this plugin which is status which is the http status of the request that will be rejected by the plugin and it's by default 403 which we saw when we had restricted access to the servers and the message to be sent back to the client when its ip is restricted and by default is your IP address is not allowed. So in order to see how these works, I'll go back to the config file and in here I'll add the status and I'll pass 401 and another one for the message. I'll pass cannot grant access. So again, I'll try to change the allow to deny and now I can test out the status code and message that the con gateway returns when it restricts IPs. So I'll hit docker compose up and again try to access the echo server and in here I see again a Kong error and it is exactly the same message that I provided in the config files. And also if I try to inspect the request in here, I see that the status is 401 and it is successfully overwritten the default value, which was 403. So that's all for this video. This tool is one of my favorite tools and it is a really handy tool to use. For example, if you know some IPs that should not be accessing your services, you can provide those IPs in this list of deny IPs. Or for example, if you have some IPs that only those IPs should access your services, you can provide them in the allow section of the config file. So I hope you learned something new in this video and if you have any questions just go ahead and ask me in the comment section and also don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next videos.